All right, welcome to This Week Inside the New York Knicks, episode 19. Yeah, you in the place to be, and I am the objective fan straight out of Kings County, New York City's finest, and you know the vibes, man. Listen, man, now is the time to be happy to be a Knicks fan. Um, before we get into it, let's take care of the business early. Like this video and also subscribe yeah, definitely to hit that subscribe button, like button. Tell a friend to tell a friend. You in the place to be. And listen, I got an action-packed show for you. Yo, today, the Knicks, we won our 50th game for the first time in 11 years. Um, since that mellow team in 2013, when they had the whole OGs, they had Jason Kidd, Marcus Camby. It's, it's just a great time to be a Knicks fan. I, 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 I kind of... This is like the first game all year. I kind of half watched the game because I really wanted us to get this win. And I really didn't want to be disappointed <laughs> because I knew the Bulls were going to come out and play. But like I told you on the last episode, I said that the Knicks could get the job done. But listen, man, if you're new to the podcast, this is a uh, Twin K podcast where we literally cover the Knicks 365. Seven days a week. If you give me 50 minutes, I give you the next. That's the purpose of this show. Sometimes I do a live. This one I want to do pre-recorded to make sure I hit a lot of the topics. Um, the last one was a live episode. You know, salute to all the people that were in the building. That was a nice turnout. But I want to do the show pre-recorded because there's some things I just need to get to. And the chat is great, but sometimes the chat distracts me from the point that I want to prove. So as you can see right next to me, Still, like, I got to get this right. Okay, so now I know. So to the right of me, I got a point left. We're going to be talking about these topics, the Knicks versus the Bulls, the playoff preview. We talk about some potential injury updates. You know, some players were under the weather and things of that nature for this last game against the Bulls. Uh, we'll also talk about Julius Randle and his successful surgery. We'll jump into the Nets game, Celtics game, and more. There's different topics. So this podcast, we literally get jump into research mode. So if you're not familiar, getting ready to switch into research mode. Let's we'll start off with the standings now. Once again, Knicks for the second time in the Knicks tenure in the 2000s. We haven't been a second round playoff team since the Mellow did it in 2013. And we got that 50 of wins, which solidified that second seed. So the Milwaukee Bucks, they kind of They've, you know, rolled over, laid an egg, and got demoted from the second seed to the third seed. But I'm pretty sure that they're not upset with that because people seem to think that the Indiana Pacers or the Orlando Magic are a lighter touch or not as tough as Miami Heat and Philadelphia 76ers. I'm going to say that records matter. And yes, teams were within a game or two within each other, but. At the same time, there's a reason why these teams are finishing where they're finishing. And if you have a mentality that you don't want to play a certain team going into the playoffs, that means that you're probably not even a good team in the first place. That probably means you're going to get sent home early. And so Milwaukee fall into the third seed. I can't say that they didn't put, play their hardest because Litter did play. I can't say they didn't give a honest effort. And to be honest, if you look, especially... Milwaukee had high expectations. If you're looking to get to a championship, then you want to secure that home court advantage in the second round, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to secure the second round advantage. So big up to the Knicks for getting that seed. So now we're either going to face Philadelphia 76ers, as you can see when you look into the, let me scroll down because my head was in the way. You got uh, Philadelphia and Miami. Right, they're gonna duke it out, and then we'll play the winner. And I don't care who wins the, that game. I, I I want the I want the best competition because I feel as though if we're looking to really get, go for a deep playoff run, like I said, I'm not gonna guarantee championship right now, but you're gonna have to play the best. I mean, let's jump into the full injury reports briefly, and I I'll, I'll touch more on this once I get into. The playoff preview, but I do. I just want to get a, a glimpse at health wise where these teams are. So let's look at Miami. So, of course, Harry Rozier, he's out. Oh, he, the goal is 
for them to try to get him back. When is the playing game? I think the playing game is the Wednesday. So Wednesday is the 17th. So yeah, they're hopefully they're trying to get him back for the 17th. But he hurt his neck. And Kevin Love is somebody, another guy. They, they're going to need these guys. Duncan Robinson. So uh, he did a little hobble, but not too, not too major. Nothing to, to prevent them from being at their most optimal. So we'll see how that goes. And I just want to pull up the Sixers. Of course, off the top of the head, we know that Joel and B, he came back from a torn meniscus. So there we go. Philadelphia 76ers. So yeah, he's day to day. This this precautionary measures, you know, when you tore your meniscus, that's a serious procedure surgery, especially for a professional athlete. And how physical he plays, he's all over the floor. He's diving for stuff like Joel and B, there's no slouch and he plays defense. So a lot of stress and then Milton. So they're trying to have their guys healthy and ready to go. But they're they're hobbled. And of course, when you look at the Knicks, we just got really we're just missing Julius Randle. So I think that we're gonna be okay going into the playoffs. As far as yeah, like I said here, when you look at this long list of Knicks history, they didn't update it yet. It's fifty wins. You gotta go back to twenty thirteen when we actually won fifty four games. And to be honest, I know that people don't wanna look back at things and, and hindsight is twenty twenty, but at the same time I think that this fifty four win Nick team could have did could have did something special. Possibly win the championship because we actually gave Miami a run for their money. So I'm gonna jump into the stats, of course. So Jalen Brunson, he finishes with a 28.6 points as his average on the season. Hopefully this stuff is updated. It's probably not, but great numbers going into the playoffs. So I want to jump into the game. So of course the Knicks, you know, they had a crazy tough win in overtime and to win to get that 50th win and clinch the second seed and literally control their own destiny. For this game, like I said, I kind of really wasn't watching the game too tightly because I was a little, I ain't going to lie, I was a little nervous. I was because I thought Chicago was going to break our hearts in the garden, so I didn't want to go through the heartache. But I did watch enough of the game to get a gist of what was going on. Of course, Jalen Brunson with the 40 ball, he's amazing. I'm going to get into some of his achievements. For starters, he has seven consecutive 30-point games to close the season, which is incredible. That's an incredible clip. It, it was his 36th, 30th point game of the season, and that tied the franchise record with, guess who? Patrick Ewing. Clap it up for Patrick Ewing. And the great Richie Guerin, who's at the top of all this, the records for the Knicks. So Jalen Brunson really, he definitely did his thing, man. I mean, closed the season strong. And I was going to wait, but since we on some of his accomplishments, I honestly think that Jalen Brunson is a candidate for, to be MVP. Not that he should be favored, but I, I'm honestly going to put him in the top five. And the, the four guys I would, I would only consider ahead of him, only because they're, they're the only ones really putting up the better numbers than him, would be Luka, Shy. You know, Luka, from an individual standpoint, his numbers is undeniable. And he has his team. I think they won 50 wins as well. And they, they clinched the playoff berth, not in the play-in. And he literally is the, t- the, the life force of that team. But I think SGA, honestly, would be my leader for MVP. I feel like their first seed and what they were able to accomplish this year was pretty impressive. I, I'll even go back just so we can get a, a look at where these candidates are. Cause they always say the MVP award is a is a team award. So yeah, so if you look at the standards, OKC, they're locked up at that first seed. Like I said, Dallas got the 50 wins, right? I'm going with OKC because I feel like they're the best team in the West, at least not in the league. And you have to give the man credit for being that guy on that team. With that young team, no other all-stars, right? Golden Haywood, he's just in the veteran role. He got traded to the team, came later in the year. So I think SGA was my leader for MVP. Then after that, you go Jokic, right? Jokic, I think. Honestly, I have Jokic over Luka only because, like I said, I, the team success is something that we value, and finishing second is better than finishing fifth. And honestly, after those four, to be honest, or those three, I could put Jalen Brunson there. Now, 
Tatum, I would give Tatum the edge. I got Tatum in my top five for MVP because 64 wins. I mean, you're the best player on the best team. That deserves consideration. But Brunson, I got them right there. So I think Brunson is an All-NBA first team with those guys. He should be All-NBA first team. That's one. We talked about that briefly on the last episode. And, and I also think that he's fourth, fourth or fifth in the MVP race. So that's just how I see it. But this Bulls game, to me, I'm so confident in my Knicks that, and I'm not going to jump ahead. We're going to take this a game at a time. And we're, we're going to, I'm going to do some live pay by pays. I'm going to do some random lives too. I try to give some head up notice so you guys will know. But I want to, you know, really highlight some things. And one of the things I want to highlight is the Knicks showed character in this game. You really had to watch the game to get a feel for what I'm saying because mid-third quarter, fourth quarter, right, I kind of was watching some of the other games too, just briefly on League Pass and flipping back, looking at the game, and then you see Milwaukee lose. You see Cleveland lose. So to those that were for manipulating matchups, this was an opportunity for the Knicks to honestly do their own version of a semi-tank. It's not really a tank because it's not like they're trying to get a big, better draft pick and miss the playoffs. But they literally could have sabotaged the game through the game because Chicago came for our throws. Chicago was on something. We beat them already twice. And they didn't want us to get that third win, especially going into a playing situation. We They had the embarrassing play in the other Bulls game. I'll get to that. By the way, if you're watching, I'm not sure what my flagship topic is just yet, but I will have one. But I'm a cook. I'm a cook. This is an episode of me cooking. But this game showed me the Knicks character. Instead of doing those things that some other teams we know would have done, they played the game to the finish, tried to win the game. Played their hearts out. He could have set the, he could have set the guys out in the fourth, like the Nets did the other day when they set bridges. You know, because to be honest, some people for whatever reason believe that the Pacers will be a soft touch, and good luck when walking in that series. Seriously, they're, they're going to need it because Pascal Siakam is someone that's proven, and I'm not scared of the Pacers either. Actually, I wanted to face the Pacers. I really want a rival. I hope we get the heat in the first round. I know some of you guys are going to say, why do you hope that? I hope that because I feel as though we could beat them. And I feel like we owed them for last season. So I want to atone for that and get the W. But that's what this game was to me. I don't care about none of these stats. We talk, I talked about Brunson with the 40 ball, Dante with the 25 threes. I mean, 25 points on 5 of 14 shooting from downtown. Boyan, yeah, I got a video coming. I'm going to do a video on about Boyan that's going to get you guys upset, and I don't care. I'm coming with a video talking about Boyan. And Deuce didn't really play much minutes because he's still dealing with the illness, but he'll, he'll be fine going into the playoffs. It's a non-COVID-like illness. He'll be fine. But the key to this game was Precious Inouye. And I think I got an article here talking about Precious So. Salute to old media giving us our props. Uh, I had a fan somewhere talk about, I don't think it was on YouTube, it was probably somewhere else, but Nick fan telling me like, oh, why am I so hard on old media? They are giving us our props. The reason why, it, 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 it literally took us to win 50 games and get to the playoffs without our three-time All-Star for them to honestly give us some credit, but they still write us off. They're still very disrespectful. And a lot of them don't got us coming out the first round. They don't think we could beat the Pacers. Hell, they don't think we could beat the Magic. And they, for them, sure don't believe we could beat the Pacers or the Heat. And I say it's cap. But this guy, Precious Anue, who minutes have been diminished due to the return of Mitchell Robinson and OG and Anobi, because he was starting at the four. And then OG came back. Now they go with Hart and OG sort of sharing power forward duties with OG getting the tougher assignment defensively. And so when Mitch had to sit out for the, for the second half, Tom Thibodeau said that uh, he was informed by the medical staff that Mitchell Robinson was unavailable. So I don't know 
what that is now, maybe in the morning time, because I'm recording this. Typically, I record Sunday mornings, but I wanted to watch the game, and now I'm recording kind of late in the nighttime. So, because I was also waiting to see if more news would come out. But hopefully, there's nothing serious with Mitch. Hopefully, it was just the precaution of soreness, and you know, you don't want to go too hard, especially when you have other options like Precious Inoue. So, Precious Inoue did his thing, and then they said Hartenstein, he got his 31 minutes, right? I believe that's what he got. Just double check. Yeah, he did. So they, they didn't want to to strain Hartenstein by pushing them over the limit. So Precious, guess who gets them the, the time? Precious in the way. That's why, salute to Precious. That's why you should always stay ready. You never know when you're going to get into the game and do something that is very, very important for the success of the team. So he scored four points and a putback dunk with one minute left and help sustain the four-point lead. Then he stopped DeMar DeRozan in the final possession. Salute to Precious, man. It's heroics, late-game heroics. And it's good, like, going into the playoffs. That's why another reason why I'm not worried about Joel Embiid. And I'm going to get to this. Because we have the bigs to match, you know, to throw on him. Not that they're going to stop him. Joel Embiid is incredible. Don't get it twisted. But I'm saying we got big guys that can match up against them. And, and then even in this game, OG Ananobi had a play where he stripped DeRozan. OG's incredible. O, uh, OG's incredible. Now, Tom Thibodeau commented because they said that OG had a slight limp towards the end of the game. I didn't really notice that. But uh, Tom Thibodeau said this. And you got to love Tom Thibodeau's responses. He said, everyone has a little limp. If you're playing hard, you got something. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. So I didn't actually hear him say that. But, you know, in terms of measuring the tone. But it just sounds to me like, yeah, y'all making a big deal out of everything, man. Y'all got to knock it off, man. Everybody's okay. So let's jump into the playoffs. Like I said, I'm not sure what my flagship topic is. But we're going to jump into the playoffs. So right now it's a TBA or TB, TBD. And the game is going to be April 20th. So we don't know the time as well. but. Hey, we'll see who that matchup is going to be. More than likely, if I don't do a live play-by-play -play for game one, I definitely will do one for game two. I hope the game will be on Sundays. This Saturday, I got some things to do. And, and there's a big fight on Saturday. Might be at the Barclays Center. I know that's the Ops home, but, you know, they got boxing there. I might. So, I don't know. We'll see the time. Now, if the game is early on that, on that Saturday, maybe I might consider doing a live play-by-play. -play because I have something to do later that evening. But so let's see what old media has to say about us clinching the playoffs. Got some articles here. Knicks clinched the number two seed in the playoffs and face tougher road with 76 Heat play-in winner. Why is it a tougher road? Just because they got Joel Embiid and, and Jimmy Butler. Like I said, Joel Embiid is coming off of surgery. He's not 100% Joel Embiid. And even if he was, hey, you got to be who's in front of you. And, and the Heat is not the same, in my opinion, they're not the same team from last year. They got some good pieces. They still got Jimmy Butler. But I, this turning it on in the playoffs, I think, can only get you but so far. They do this all the time. They do this all the time. And I think that is going to run its course, whether they play us or the Celtics. And to be honest, I'm going to keep it 100% funky with you. And I want to see something before I say what I'm going to say. What I want to see is the injury report for Atlanta. Because people sleep on the Atlanta Hawks, right? As if the Atlanta Hawks can't beat Chicago. Because Chicago kind of shot themselves in the foot. Losing Drummond. He's a game-time decision. Hopefully he's okay. This kid, the sumo, is pretty talented. I actually gave him his props on the podcast. I said he was kind of tough. So... If they could get DeSumo and Drummond back, they're going to be a formidable foe. But the Hawks, even though, you know what, I take the back because I, I forgot Jalen Johnson was out. Jalen Johnson, that's, he's a big part of what the Hawks like to do. I was going to say the Hawks is, is you can't sleep on the Hawks. But without Jalen Johnson, Congo is a nice little backup too. They're going to have trouble. They're going to have trouble. But don't sleep on the Hawks. Don't, or the Bulls. Or the Bulls, if you get to that AFC matchup. So the old, old media trying to, you got to write something, I guess. I mean, 
Let's see. Unlike the Cavaliers, oh yeah, the Cavs are the team that tanked. I forgot about that. Who clearly tanked their game Sunday and avoided any possibility of getting the second seed. Tom Thibodeau said he never thought about conceding Sunday's finale, even after the matchup's repercussions were pretty clear because the blowout simultaneously occurring across the Eastern Conference. So yeah, Tibbs, Tibbs, I didn't even have to read this article to know that, but the article is confirming what I said. This is what Tibbs says. Really? I mean, the object is to win. Put everything you have into winning. That's the bottom line. That's a fact. I agree with you. Salute to Coach Tibbs. Coach Tibbs is an old school coach. I, I love his demeanor, his style. Yeah, we're not looking for no easy touch, nor are we trying to say that one team is going to be better than the other to face. You got to beat them all. Okay, he says some more. I think everything does matter. That's just me personally, Thibodeau said. And so when we talked about from the start of the season, we want to be our best at the end, and that's something to strive for every day. That's a fact. It's a fact. So old media, they're, they're scared of the Heat and the Sixers. Us, I don't know why. We beat both of them during the season. So let's see what else I want to talk about with the playoff run. It also said that we want to go to the finish line. That's the way we're looking at it. He also said that, too. So it's some quotes about him trying to talk it about. Josh Hart said, I heard the lights are really bright at MSG in terms of having a home court advantage in the first two rounds. So Nick's not settling. This is another New York Post article. So Nick's not settling for the number three seed favorable playoff path captures exactly who they are. Big up to Mike Vaccaro because that's exactly... If you watch the game against the Bulls, that's exactly what you would get. We are a team that's not looking for no shortcuts. Look at this. By 3 o'clock, one of the mysteries was solved. That's when the final buzzer sounded at the Cavaliers Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Right? When the whole, the lowly Hornets, that's one of our words that we like to use, lowly Hornets that had knocked off the Cavaliers. So it was there that the Knicks, if they were so inclined, could have started finagling things. It's a big fact. But the Knicks don't finagle. It's a fact. They're not a perfect basketball team. Of course not. And of course, old media will never give us that credit, even, even if we were. They have their flaws, but they're an army of folks from Charles Barkley on down who dine out of the opinion that they aren't as good as their record. Fact. That they're vulnerable. Look at old media calling out old media. I like it. That they're vulnerable. That they can be had. Maybe that is true, but we'll find out in due time. So salute to Mike Vaccaro. Definitely check out this article. He gave us our props. He said, yo, this, we are a team that's going to deal with what's in front of us. We're not going to try to make it easy or none of that. I'm going to move on. Um, that was another old media article. I just don't feel like logging in. Um, I do have all of these subscriptions. I just, if I'm not logged in, I'm going to move on. But yeah, so yeah, I just read that quote. Josh Hart said the, light, the lights are bright in the garden. So definitely salute to you if you're still listening to the podcast. I do want to say, um, take a little brief channel. intermission. Definitely check out the shop, shop at the objective Knicks fan.com. You can get cool t shirts like this. I'm going to definitely have some more stuff in stock. But definitely over the summer by next season, I'm, I'm going to really revamp the store. But definitely check it out. I got a whole bunch of I bleed orange and blue t shirts. This is the NY edition. I don't want to move the mic, but if you go to shop at the objective Knicks fan.com, or you can look at the bottom, yeah, the bottom right corner of the screen. You can see the t-shirts flashing there. Definitely salute everyone for checking me out, man. Rocking. We good on time. I'm going to start moving a little bit faster because I just want to make sure I get to some of these old old media articles. Let's say next to face the winner of the Heat. Sixers playing for the first round. Yeah, we just read that. So salute to SNY, by the way. That's their article. Nuts game. This game, honestly, and I told you guys this last time, I said that the Nets game will be the toughest game on this whole Final Four game stretch. And it was, and well, the Chicago game was the toughest. But this Nets game definitely was very tough. The Nets hate our guts, and I knew they were going to bring it to us. I knew it, you know. But the team, I feel like we're at a point right now where we just find ways to win regardless. and. The reason why winning is so important is because I'm gonna I'm do I'm gonna do more of a, a playoff preview too. But winning is so important going into the playoffs is be, because you need to have that mentality 
especially if you're a high seed going up against a low seed. Now, we know the low seeds in, in both conferences are really good teams. But you can't go into there with a mentality of not winning games and then having to turn it on. That's how a lot of these teams lose games. They got a long break. Then they didn't play the last couple of games. That's why the Celtics are dangerous. The Celtics played every game tough. I mean, they got beat by some teams because, hey, down the stretch of the season, teams are desperate. Even look at us. We beat the Celtics. I'm going to get into that. But you have to play your game and don't waver and don't finagle. Don't do none of that. So we finished the season winning our last five games, starting with an important Milwaukee Buck victory. So I just wanted, and I said this on the last podcast, I said I would just love to get the 50 wins. I feel like 50 wins is so significant for us. And this game right here is the reason why we won 50 games, right? Jalen Brunson, they actually played good defense. By the way, the Nets, they got this kid right here, this kid Wilson. This kid, Wilson, is not a bad player. Did a decent job on Brunson. Of course, no one can stop Brunson. No one man can stop Brunson. I just like the schemes that the Nets ran. I feel like they're, well, they're a well-coached team. I believe Kevin, Kevin Alley, he stepped in for Jock Vaughn. He's doing an incredible job. And Cam Thomas, is just a, he's just a flamethrower. 41 points. Six assists, which, which kind of took me by surprise because Cam Thomas is not normally a guy that's known for passing. He wants to jack up all the shots. But this game, once again, was a Mitch Robinson coming out party. We know that Isaiah Hartenstein didn't play this game, nor did Deuce McBride play this game because of an illness and Hartenstein just routine rest. So seeing Mitch get the 15 points, eight rebounds was, was crucial for me. Precious only got the eight minutes, but his minutes are going to suffer because we we pretty much healthy at the five spot. And Tom Thibodeau has found solace in having OG and Anobi start at three. But this game was, like I said, another game with just Hart, Josh Hart. <laughs> Josh Hart had a nice game. But just like team playing together, playing well, doing what they had to do. And I was, I was worried about this game, but the Nets kind of doing the towel. Mikel Bridges only played 24 minutes. Only had five points. Probably wouldn't have played the game if he wasn't trying to keep his active game streak going. But this game to me was just another one of those great games. Let's see if I got any news from this from this game. Like sometimes you, you're just gonna have to win these these ugly games, man. Because these I'm telling you right now, these games were pretty ugly. So oh, Can Thomas, his 41 points were the most scored by a net at Madison Square Garden all time. Guess what? The previous high was, guess who? Da, 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 trivia. Who, who you think had the highest record? He was a Nick. One of the best scoring Knicks of all time. Bernard King. Bernard King had 40 points back in 1979. So, let's see. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about the foul. So, there was a foul in this game where Cam Thomas pushed Jalen Brunson on the ground. Now, on the first glance, I have to admit, it looked like a crazy, blatant, nasty foul. Something that you would do to be dirty. But after watching it again, it wasn't really that serious. It wasn't wasn't anything too malicious. And But here's the key. OG Ananobi, he went and he, he stepped to him and said, hey, what was that about? Why are you pushing my mans to the ground? Like an enforcer, reminding me of a Charles Oakley, like a job that an enforcer is supposed to do. And OG and Obi stand up for his teammate, and they have to be separated. And then they wind up getting two technical fouls. And so look at OG standing up for his teammate. So let's see. I think Cam Thomas said he just over-exaggerated and flopped. <laughs> was a, it was a bit of a flop. So kudos for that. For, for that. He got a tech on me, though. I don't like that. Uh, Tom Thibodeau. Uh, so Tom Thibodeau. Okay. No, that's a different quote. He didn't. Cam Thomas didn't like the fact that he got a technical foul for pushing down Jalen Brunson. Hey, but at least, yeah, you got that $2,000 fine. But hey, at least you didn't get ejected from the game. 
that was a big deal. I'm trying to see if I have a quote from OG and Anobi. I think I do. Yeah, here's a quote from OG and Anobi. It was a foul. Then he just, hold on, wait. Nope, that's Cam Thomas. Let's see. Yeah, so Ananobi had a different interpretation of the play. He said, I would just ask, what was that about? That's exactly what it looked like on the camera, too. He said, I thought it was an excessive push. I don't want to ever see a teammate pushed. And that's it, nothing more. So, yeah, he was just being there for his teammate. And then Jalen Brunson said he appreciated Ananobi's support and admitted that his teammate has historically had a short temper. It means a lot. He said Ananobi stepping in. Yeah, he's known for getting overly animated. So OG got, I mean, OG got a little reputation out there, yo. Look the OG holding it down. That's what a teammate's supposed to do, man. And especially your your star player. You gotta you can't allow your star player to be on the island. So, like we said, Mitchell Robinson played 25 minutes. And Tom Thibodeau said about Mitch Robinson, who played those 25 minutes, he says he played him because no one, he makes plays that no one else can. That's a fact. I mean, the man is a beast on the offensive glass. He's an elite, a lob threat, right? Superior rim protector. Even though he has shortcomings on the offensive end, outside of the lob threat and maybe some putbacks, he is someone that does things that you just overly need. I'm trying to think. Let's, let's see what other articles I got here. Just want to make sure I got all my quotes. Sometimes I miss them when I do... The live play-by-play. I mean, the live play-by-play. When I do it live. So, yeah. I'm on the... No, nah, I'm not going to play the push, but... But, yeah, this is uh, the post talked about it. Salute to Angela Reese. You know, she came to the game. I think she's going to... Yeah, it says here she's going to opt for the WNBA draft, which I think is tonight, because this video should be... To, so, I'm going to be tuning into the WNBA draft. Curious to see what ha- you know what happens, who goes where. We know... Caitlin Clark, she will be going first to, I believe, the Fever have that first pick. So, salute to her for showing up in the garden. You know, New York is the Mecca. I don't care what none of these guys want to say. New York is the Mecca. And you got to come. If you want to be a star, you have to come to the garden. And I like the way she responded to the cameras. She's going to be a star. She handled it incredible to me. I think that. She, this is a great PR move. Once again, the draft will be tonight. So I just think that it was just a good look for her. So salute to her for coming to the garden. You got to come to the garden, right? Especially because the Knicks is the hottest thing in the city. And honestly, the Knicks is possibly the hottest thing in the East right now, right? Um, Because Boston lost some games recently. We know Boston is the best, but who cares? Right now is our time. So... Let's see, I got more articles talking about OG. You could read these articles if you want. Yeah, I think these are the quotes I just read. So, yeah, OG and OG and Anobi, man, being there for his teammate. Kudos to him. So, I'm not logged in to my ESPN Plus, ESPN Plus account on here. I just want to, I'm going to tell you what the Knicks grade is. So, the Knicks grade was a B plus or a B coming into the season, right? And this is according to Kevin Pelton, right? from ESPN, but they got an A-minus on the season. How do you feel about the Knicks getting an A-minus on the season? I think it's a good grade because, honestly, it would have made it an A or A-plus, would have been a healthy Randall, and competing for a first seed in the East. So they gave us an A-minus. You know, old media trying to give us our respect. Salute to old media. They got no choice. I just don't like I said. Like, I, I don't like the, the shade, the slight, because you got to understand there is – and I'm getting more into old media right now, there is a a slant that goes against the Knicks because it gets clicks and views and there's a narrative. So you just follow the blueprint and you're going to get the the articles like this, for example. You're going to get people who will share it. It's going to go viral because, to be honest, the Knicks have the most fans. And I'll debate any Laker fan on that. The Knicks have the most fans. The Lakers have the most fair weather fans, right? When the Lakers are not doing good, they're not as deep. The Knicks could be struggling. The Knicks will always be deep. And like I said, they could challenge me on that if they want to. Let's see. So, yeah, Kenny Smith. I'm going to do a video on old media. But do you guys remember 
Kenny Smith. This is the this is the clip of him the night of the, the, the game. But do you remember what he said earlier in the year about the Knicks and Jalen Brunson? Because right now Jalen Brunson is the best player in the Eastern Conference. I remember when Kenny Smith went down every team in the standings. And you know what? Let's do it. Let's 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 go. Let's do it now. Let's let's have some fun, right? He went down every team that was in the standings, and he pointed out that Jalen Brunson. And the Knicks don't have the best player on the court. So he said against Boston, we don't have the best player on the court. Tatum and Brown, right? Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And he might have even said Dane. Cleveland Cavaliers, Donovan Mitchell. Orlando Magics, Paolo Bencaro. These are guys that are all better than Jalen Brunson, right? According to Kenny Smith. Indiana Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton. Philadelphia 76ers, Joel Embiid. I give you Joel Embiid. He was an MVP candidate, and he was an MVP last year. Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler. So all these teams have better players. The best player on the floor would be Jalen Brunson, right? That's what he said. Of course, we all disagree with that. So let's, let's go back, right? So now, Kenny Smith, two nights ago, or a couple of nights ago, um, when the Knicks played, I believe it was the Celtics on TNT, Jalen Brunson is the best player in the Eastern Conference by far. See that? By far, I got it highlighted. Okay? I would give a round of applause for that, but how do you go in four, like three months, four months, how do you go from being not the best player against none of these teams to now he's the best player in the Eastern Conference? I'm going to do a deeper dive on that, but this is his exact quote. The New York Knicks are the most surprised team to me in basketball right now. They should be a number six seed without Randall, which is kind of interesting that we overcame those odds, right? But it, I think that's just a testament to how good Jalen Brunson is, how good Coach Tom Thibodeau is, having us prepared, right? And how actually good of a team that we have, to be honest. So yeah, Mitchell Robinson missed games, OG missed games, but Brunson has been the best player in the Eastern Conference by far. You want to read more of this? Go to the Post. They got it. Charles Barkley who is another guy that contradicts himself. He actually got on the, the Celtics, said they should have played better. They half-assing, which they, I don't know if they were half-assing or if it was just the Knicks, they, the Knicks came out swinging. The Knicks would, the way the Knicks played the Celtics that night, I don't think nobody would have beat the Knicks that night. But old media is just funny. So let's see. I'm not logging in, so I'm going to move forward. Rick Pitino, OG Ananobi, believe Jalen Brunson deserves hardware, should be winning MVP. I kind of hopped on this a little earlier. Maybe we'll read a little bit of this. I mean, you're not hearing as many. Oh, okay. I like this. Salute to Peter Bot. I like this. I like how he started this. You're not hearing as many criticism or backhanded compliments anymore about Jalen Brunson. Or the Knicks with pundits, former and current NBA stars and basketball luminaries, fully buying into what they're accomplishing as the playoffs approach. I, I half agree with that. They're not using the old narratives or, I mean, some of it still lingers, like Gilbert Arena saying that Jalen Brunson is 5'11 and Steph Curry 6'3. Yeah, they're both 6'2. Which means that back in Gilbert's days, they would be both 6'3 because they changed how they measure height. I'll get to that. If you want to know more, a little bit more about that, go watch the video I did talking about Jalen Brunson isn't too small. So this is not really all the way true. Right? This is kind of like halfway true. But, okay, so we talked about Kenny Smith changing his tune. The New York Knicks is the most surprising team in basketball. Yeah, we, we know he said that, right? Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Who is this? Rick Pitino said, okay, I'm blown away with what the Knicks are accomplishment. Okay. ESPN, Kendrick Perkins. Yeah, he always gave us our props. But he also said some crazy stuff earlier, too, that I exposed. So, yeah, you want to check this out? You know, definitely check this article out. Rick Pitino said that Jalen Brunson deserves to win an MVP. Old media halfway giving us our props. I'm not going to say that Jalen Brunson is the MVP only because I feel like SGA is probably the, the most deserving player, in my opinion, of an MVP. What he's did with the Thunder in the West Coast is amazing. I love, I, I love Jalen Brunson, but... I love Jalen Brunson, but I can't give him the MVP over GA. That's what makes me objective. You know, I'm the objective Knicks fan. If you want, if you want a Knicks 
Stan boy who just is a, a man stan, go go follow another channel. I'm I'm gonna give you the real all the time. So let's keep it moving. Okay, we're not too bad on time. OG and an OB and Jalen Brunson dominating went on the floor together. So OG and an OB and Jalen Brunson dominating went on the floor together. Okay. It's less than a quarter of a full season, just 20 games. Ah, oh, man, I, I really wish that we had more time. But next year, we'll get that time that we need to see how this team will really do when all of these guys are together. But check this out. This was after the next game. Knicks are 18 and 2 when the duo plays together. I think now it's 19 and 2 because they just won against the Bulls. But check this out. They have a net rating of plus 24.7, spanning 599 minutes and an offensive rating of 125.8. Salute to the dynamic duo holding it down. I mean, who's better? Who would you rather have? RJ and, and Brunson or OG and, and Brunson with these numbers? I'm pretty sure RJ and, and Brunson's numbers wasn't that good. So, yeah, check this article out if you want to read more about that. I, I, I do think that OG and Anobi has made a difference, especially stepping up into that second scoring option role. But to honestly... The second option is kind of a second option by committee, if you're going to be real. I mean, some nights it's Dante. Hell, some nights it's Deuce. Hell, some nights it's Josh Hart. Some nights it's... So this is a team effort, right? Team coming together to do their thing. So but salute to those two for having the numbers. I do want to give a salute to Nate Robinson. Once a Nick, always a Nick. Um, definitely keep him in your prayers. He needs to have a liver transplant. It doesn't think he has much longer to live if he doesn't get the transplant. Um, he's been on dialysis. He says he can't survive a week or two without the dialysis. No matter how you feel about some of the decisions he might have made health-wise, um, once a Nick, always a Nick. We got to be there to support our Knicks. And, you know, just keep them in your prayers. I'm not sure if there's a website or anything that is looking for to see if people are matches or stuff like that, but just just prayers and, and and you guys can look into it. Maybe there's something that can be done to, to help them on our end as fans. Um, But Nate also talked about his beef he had with Doc Rivers, $1.5 million. This is the incentive thing. He had one more game to play, and Doc didn't play him, so that disqualified from getting the $1.5 million. Nate said, I think he said on the podcast, he said, I still got a little beef with Doc. I had a contract where I was made like $2 million or one point five, something like that, if I played a certain amount of games. Doc Rivers gave him a DNP, which is do not play or did not play. The game where I needed them to get... One more game to get that money. That's crazy. That's crazy. That that's that to me is sucker stuff. And this is an article talking about Nate Robinson's kidneys. He doesn't have much longer to live. He can't get the kidney. And he's trying to make the best out of his life. So definitely check out this post article, man. And like I said, keep them in your prayers. For sure. Jalen Brunson and the, uh, the best sports show in town. I don't know about that. The New York Liberty might have something to say about that. They, we, ain't, we can't act like the Liberty didn't go to the final. I know they're not down with the MSG wave. They went to the Barclays Center. Well, Dolan, you know, he sold them. Okay, but they're still New York. I still rock with them. I don't know if, they're the, if, if the Knicks are the best show in town. And also, the Yankees are putting in work. Can't forget it, but salute the Yankees. And we got to see what these Jets do, hopefully with a, with a healthy Aaron Rodgers. But yeah, you can check this out by Mike Lou because salute to him. Yeah, we went over to Nate Robinson. So these are the power rankings. I, I forgot to go over the power rankings last week. Last week, honestly, if I pull it up right quick, no problem. Last week, they actually gave us our props, I believe. They didn't drop us to, yeah, because we lost mad games. So we lost to, when this ranking came out, this was April 4th, I believe. So we lost to Miami, OKC, San Antonio. We had a three-game losing streak. 
I don't think the Chicago game counted yet. Yeah, because we didn't play Sacramento and Chicago. So they kind of they kind of took it easy us on us. They only dropped us two spots. Well, we probably should have dropped further. But the power rank is a little better, but still some cap. I think the one, two, three is correct for sure. Dallas, I mean, Dallas has definitely have been winning some games. They drop OKC because OKC definitely has been losing games. Clippers, you know, they clinched the four C. The Bucks, they dropped the Bucks one spot and they they boosted us us one spot. But remember, this this the Boston game didn't happen yet. The Brooklyn game didn't happen yet. The Chicago game. So maybe next week we'll get boosted a lot higher. But ESPN actually they have been doing a better job with the ranking, at least ranking us. Besides Milwaukee. I could see an argument for all these teams to be ranked ahead of us at this point in time. Then we'll jump into some word on the street. So once again, last week, we regained 21 subscribers from last week. Salute to you guys, man. And look, if you're watching the podcast, you like this video, and also don't forget to like, to my channel. subscribe, hit the bell icon, share with a friend. So we're getting close to that mark, or we might be over the mark, depending on how I edit it. I'm going to go into the lightning round. But this is the post I wrote about the 50th win. Definitely check this out. But I'm going to do a couple of these polls just to get an idea. If you don't know what Word of the Street is, this is the moment in the show where we try to get a feel for where the Knicks fans feel at this moment in time. So, attention Knicks fans, with the Knicks closing in on the second seed, how concerned are you about the, the first round matchup against the healthy and being in the Sixers? So, I kind of wrote this like five days ago. This was before we actually clinched that second seed. I always wanted us to get the second seed. So we're going to see what, how Knicks fans feel. Knicks fans have been very confident. So out of the 293 votes you had, 78% of the fans said that we will beat them. 9% said that beat is too tough and we'll lose. Come on, really? 9%. Come on, guys. But why do you think beat is too tough and we'll lose? He's coming into the playoffs hobbled. Is he going to be effective? Of course. But... I think that will be fine because I think that overall we have the better team. They got some new pieces on that team. They didn't get an opportunity to gel. So don't write yourself off, right? I mean, come on. And then 13% say, I don't know. So Knicks fans are confident. Salute to the confident Knicks fans. That honestly believe we can beat them. I'm with you guys. Despite our bench being the deepest it has been in a long time, Tibbs decided to go with an eight-man rotation. How do you feel about this shortening of the rotation that leaves Burks and Precious out of the rotation? So this is the night when he went with Mitch, Bojan, and Deuce. He didn't play Burks. Well, I think Burks is probably pretty much out of the rotation at this point. But he also didn't play Precious. I, I think we're fine. We're playoff ready. But okay, so out of the 299 votes, 66% say it's fine. We're playoff ready. I, that's what I believe. And look, and then Burks came in. Burks played a little bit when Deuce didn't play the, that game against, I think it was the Nets. And then Precious, he had a moment. So sometimes they may play, sometimes they may not play. It depends on what you need at the moment in time. So, and I think this is going to be the last one. Attention, Nick fans. What was the most impressive thing about last night's victory against the Celtics? Now, I was a little sarcastic in this one, right? So I asked 302 votes. So. I said, I put breast in the heart not playing in the fourth. All right, so let's do the votes. So I'm going I'm to I'm say this just for the hell of it. So 303 votes. 30, 23% say breast in the heart not playing in the fourth. That was the most impressive thing. 45%, these are the serious people. OG's defense on Tatum. I think it was very impressive. And then making Bartley eat his own words. 31%. That was a joke one. The first, the, the first entry in the, in the third was a joke. But I just want to have some fun. But that's all for word on the street. We'll move forward. Let me see if there's anything about this Celtics game because I don't want to go too long. Then I got to edit out a big, long foul. Just trying to check my notes. So Josh Hart, in this game, he has 16 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists. It's his 7-15th rebound of the season, man. Salute to Josh Hart. And by the way, he's 6'4". Tom Thibodeau. Um, said the best thing about Jalen Brunson is he can get better and he will because of his mindset, which is a fact. In this game, Jalen Brunson, this is when he had the 39 points, 
this was a big win for us because I think it showed the league that we are for real, even without our three-time All-Star J- uh, Julius Randle. Bojan Bajanovic had a great game this game, shooting 6-10 from the field with 14 points. It was just a great game, if you ask me. The defense on Kristaps Porzingis is always the key to me. We held him in check. I mean, he did shoot 2 of 5 from downtown, which is 40% from 3. But he went 5 of 12 from the field, and he was a minus 14 on a plus minus. We did a solid job. KP is the key to the Celtics' success against us. If we can hold KP down, they're beatable, and we should definitely get some praise, get some props for winning that game against a healthy Celtics team who, yes, they didn't have much to play for, but they did play. I think that's all for this game. I do want to show old media just a little bit, giving us the love. Knicks prove they belong in the title conversation with the bludgeoning of the league's best Celtics. This is a Christian Wilfield, by the way. I like Christian Wilfield. He's a, I think he's probably the, the number one Nick writer on the Daily News. He always writing about the Knicks, but I still, I'm still teaser. I'm gonna still poke a little bit. They, but they, but they, we proved that we're in the title conversation. I'm pretty sure if I pull up some early articles from Christian, it was a whole different tone. This is, this is a decent one. For y'all, Brian is showing why he could be a potential Knicks secret weapon. Shh, that's gonna be my next video. I'm going to show you why Boyan is important. I'm going to skip that one. Look at this. Salute to Stefan Bondi. He's a, he's a, he always covers the Knicks. But I'm still poking him. Jalen Brunson's elite status is impossible to deny. The old media love, baby. The old media love. Let's see what else I got. I'm going to wrap up. Look at this. Michael Vaccaro. Nick's dismantling of the Celtics reminiscent of Giants' late season clash with a perfect 20, 2007 Patriots. They're comparing us to the Giants that won the Super Bowl. Okay. And another another article, Peter Bott. We read him earlier. Jalen Brunson's red-hot Nick stretch has him hitting the next level of dominance. So, I mean, I just want to say, like, I am happy to, to, to let's get our props. I just don't like the half-baked, you know, let's kind of give them a half twisted compliment we know they're a good team but they're not that good it's always that barometer the Celtics haven't won nothing yes they had 64 wins but they got to win this championship or bust I just want the respect that we deserve third playoff berth in four years we haven't done this since the early 2000s for sure guaranteed I got it right here yeah I stayed prepared okay so look 50 wins, 47 wins, 41 wins. But that was because the season was shortened, right? So we probably would have got to like 45, 46 wins with a longer season. So the last time you've done that was 2013, 2012, 2011. But but the 2012 season was a short season. Yeah, we got, we lost, definitely got hooked in the first round. The last time we done it realistically was in 10 years. And then before that, it was another 10 years. Well, you had to go back to 2001. Okay, so what the Knicks is doing is praiseworthy. And you have to notice that the trend has been broken. I mean, look at this. We, before Coach Tibbs got there, when we had Coach Fisdell and Mike Miller, Knicks won 21 games. Knicks won 17 games. Knicks won 29 games, 31 games, 32 games. It's a whole different time. Let's see. Oh, we get our pick from Dallas, right? We get our pick from Dallas. I'm not sure if I have the article up there, right? Oh, yeah, I do. Knicks get final piece of the Chris Dapazingas trade at the marriage tank fiasco. So we finally get our pick from the 2019 trade because the Knicks, the Mavericks made the playoffs. Last year, they greased us and they were able to get Derek Lively who was a Duke Blue Devil, salute to Derek Lively and the Dukes, because I'm a Duke Blue Devil fan. But uh, and, and you know what? I'm going to end it on this. In this Bulls game, we blew them out. Torrey Craig, he, he did a wild stuff, Ali Hoop attempt, that wound up le- leading to Jamon, him and Draymond colliding for a dunk. But I don't see it here, but... And I believe that's what led to Draymond getting hurt and missing this game. So it was just stupid. He threw an Ali Hoop off. And Draymond thought it was for him. 
it is what it is. But that's all for this podcast, man. You know, salute to you if you watch the whole podcast. I appreciate the love. I will be coming back. I, I'm gonna do a Boyan video that may trigger some of you Nick fans. I'm gonna do some more playoff coverage. I might do a late night live one night. Like I'm a vampire, so if you guys are willing to stay up, we could call it the late night Knicks at night or something. I don't know the Knicks vampire stream or something. I don't know. We'll come up with something, but salute to you guys for rocking with me, man. That's all for this video. So until next time, let's go next.